Hey everybody, today we're gonna to be looking at one of the most famous videos regarding Jordan Peterson and the issue of faith. He meets with the famous Dennis Prager and uh, they have this really interesting dialogue uh, about belief in God and whether Jordan Peterson actually believes in God or not. Now this was uh, some time back, I think that Jordan's faith has, has kind of continued to develop uh, since that time. But I did want to make a few points, but let's take a look real quick and then we'll be right back just to kind of deconstruct some of this uh, this really deep thought uh, that Jordan Peterson kind of shares with everybody. Well, people ask me if I believe in God. You know, I just, I, I'm going to release a podcast about that because I, I answered that question for about two hours in Australia because people kept asking me that question, which I really don't like. I don't like that question. And so I, th I sat and thought about it for a good while, and I tried to figure out why. And, and then I thought, well, you, th you believe. You see. I thought, who would have the audacity to claim that they believed in God if they examined the way they lived? Who would dare say that? To, to believe, you think, to believe in a Christian sense, to actually, this is why Nietzsche said there was only ever one Christian, and that was Christ. To have the audacity to claim that means that you live it out fully. And that's an, that's an unbearable task in some sense. I just debated Slavoj Žižek about a week ago, although it wasn't really much of a debate. It was, it was a strange event. But he said something very brilliant in, to me that justified the entire event, at least from my perspective. He talked about Christ's moment of crisis on the cross when he cried out to God that he had been forsaken. And what Zizek said was that what that meant was that the conditions of human existence are so tragic that even God himself in human form lost faith for a moment in the goodness of being. And I thought that was a remarkable observation because, well, if God himself would lose faith under such conditions, what would you expect from normal human beings confronted with what we're confronted by? And To be able to accept the structure of existence, the suffering that goes along with it, and the disappointment and the betrayal, and, and to nonetheless act properly, right? To aim at the good with all your heart, right? To, to dispense with the malevolence and your desire for destruction and revenge and all of that, and to face things courageously and to tell the truth, to speak the truth and to act it out. That's what it means to believe. That's what it means. It doesn't, it doesn't mean to state it. It means to act it out. And unless you act it out, you should be very careful about claiming it. And so I've never been comfortable saying anything other than I try to act as if God exists. Because God only knows what you'd be if you truly believed. I mean, if you think about it in some sense, that's the central idea in Christianity, is that if you were capable of believing, it would be a transfiguring event, a truly transfiguring event. And I know people experience that to one degree or another, but we have no idea what the limit of that is. And we have no idea what the possibility is within each person if they lived a life that was maximally courageous and maximally truthful. You know, because maybe you're running at 60% or 70% or 20% and at cross purposes to yourself. God only knows what you'd be if, if you believed. And so, well, I act, I try to act like I believe, but I'd never claim that I manage it because it's too, it's, it's a lot to manage properly. And you have to be careful about claiming to manage things that you can't manage. And so that's part of the answer to that question. It's a great answer as it happens.
Okay, so that clip was really interesting, very thought-provoking, a lot of content about the issue of faith, and I think we should start out with, like, what is the real definition of faith before we start talking about it? You know, according to Scripture, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen. So faith has an invisible quality to it, uh, and so it's something that Scripture seems to imply is a living state of being, I guess you could say. It's something that has substance to it that is actually invisible and on the inside of you. Jordan Peterson really draws a lot of correlations to this concept of true faith and how uh, he wants to shy away from some of the shallow definitions of faith that are found in Christianity and some dif- some denominations and churches, which I can respect. But, you know, I, I want to really make a comment on one of his statements where he said, who would dare say that they believe in God if they don't live it out fully? And I think that this is an enticing concept, especially if you come from a Christian background that really weighs in on what the writer James uh, declares, which is faith without works is dead. But if you know anything about theology, you know that there is this tension between uh, Abrahamic faith and this active faith that James denotes in his writings. And I think that that tension's there on purpose. I, I don't like the idea that uh, you're not allowed to profess faith if you don't, uh, you know, live it out fully. I think, you know, that that is definitely the aim of the Christian life is to allow that seed of faith to grow into maturity. And I think James is saying, if you have no evidence to point to that your faith is alive and actually genuine, then you should take heed. I think the framework that Jordan Peterson presents in this clip is a little bit beyond where the scripture goes because it's this idea of almost like a striving to fully live out. And I do like the point, though, that's made that where could things take you if you did truly and fully live out what it means to believe in God? And obviously we find the person of Christ fulfilling that which none of us can. So there's this idea of imputed righteousness that we'll get to in a, mi- in a minute that, you know, the Christian story is really saying that Jesus does for us what we couldn't do for ourselves, And our faith is not necessarily this, this attempt to fully, you know, meet the requirements of righteousness, but rather our faith is fully in the person of Christ to do for us what we couldn't ever achieve in our human strength and in what Jordan would call our malevolent nature. Um, so uh, that that was my comments on that first part. But there was a part that I kind of took issue with, uh, which, you know, is uh, not very often because I do really enjoy a lot of the uh, the commentary of Jordan Peterson. But uh, he, he talked about the uh, the debate he had with the, the Marxist uh, scholar uh, and how there was a, a point where they, they discussed Christ on the cross being forsaken, and it was almost being portrayed as if Jesus became an atheist for a moment. And I don't think that that is a proper interpretation of that passage, because Jesus is still praying to God the Father, saying, my my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Obviously, he's not an atheist because he's praying to God the Father. I think that the passage is dealing with the total separation uh, from God that sin Uh, inflicts upon us all, and that Jesus as our substitute, which is really where we're going to come full circle in this video, that Jesus provides for the believer imputed righteousness that we could not earn in our own strength, Uh, that Jesus actually bore upon himself the sin of separation from God. And this is why we find the culmination of his suffering being total separation from God the Father, crying out saying, why have you forsaken me? So I don't think it even uh, brings a connotation to Jesus having, you know, lost belief in God. Uh, So I wanted to really kind of make that statement that I think that that would be going also beyond what Scripture teaches. Now, I like the statement that Jordan made a little bit further into his talk that, you know, his kind of idea of acting out faith is to dispense with the malevolent and aim for the good. And obviously, that is a noble idea. And every church tradition has uh, some call to righteous living living as a variable. Uh, But the old Catholic Protestant conundrum is really this. 
that, you know, the Catholic presupposition is that faith plus works equals salvation, whereas the Protestant or Reformed or whatever you want to call it, the Reformers of the 1500s were trying to get us back to a biblical worldview, which would say faith in Christ equals good works. That is, the transformed heart that comes through genuine faith in Christ leads to righteous living. So yeah, I could say that dispensing with the malevolent and aiming for the good is a natural progression of a heart that has been transformed. And that's where I would like to see a lot more attention given by Jordan on this topic, because I don't hear him go there a lot about the transformation that comes through this in this this encounter with the, the person of Jesus. Obviously, uh, we're skeptical as to whether Jordan has come to Christ yet or not, but I think that that may be the missing component because, you know, on the surface, yes, all of these things are good that, you know, the, the, the idea of being a Christian, which the word means little Christ or being a disciple or being a follower of Jesus connotates that we're, we're, we're actually living out this thing that we claim to be believe. But I think that it can be a little bit heavy handed to say that, People aren't starting from different places on that journey. The faith begins as a seed that grows into maturity. You can't expect someone who just came to Jesus to be able to perfectly demonstrate the sacrificial nature of Christ overnight, but that that is our aim and that through the empowering Holy Spirit, we are brought through a process of sanctification to become more like Jesus over a process of time. So those are my thoughts in that regard. Uh, so, Here's the thing. Jordan really weighs in on believing means acting a thing out. I, I would say that's true and that true faith is transformative. Those are kind of my parting you know, thoughts. He, he makes a statement that true faith is hard to actually manage. I think that that could be true. But here's the thing. We're not meant to manage it. We're meant to stop being the managers and allow God to be the ultimate manager of our life. It's kind of like the parable of the sower. I love how it it it, it uh, portrays this experience of faith like like a couple of different types of soil where a farmer's throwing seed onto a, a path into thorny soil and then rocky soil and then good soil. And depending on the condition of the soil, it brings forth either good or bad fruit or no fruit at all. And that's really what it's about. It's that we want faith to have the condition where we we kind of have to clear the fields of our life. We have to make decisions to organize our, our life in such a way that our faith in Christ can flourish. That's why I always tell people, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. And you have to be intentional. This is why church and why a community of faith is so important because in order for us to create a good environment where our the seed of faith can grow into maturity, we've got to be thinking about soil. We've got to be thinking about the condition of the soil uh, and that kind of thing. So, I would just encourage you, you know, eat the meat, throw away the bones. I think there's some good thoughts here, very stimulating uh, uh, when it comes to Jordan Peterson on belief in God and his emphasis on, you know, that he is kind of takes issue with Christians that make a confession of faith but don't show the love of Christ. That is a fair crit critique of Christianity. However, let's not miss the fact that Jesus did for us what we couldn't do for ourselves so that the transforming work of the Holy Spirit can come into our lives and bring about progressive sanctification to where we look more like Jesus every day of our walk with him. So I hope this was helpful. God bless you. I hope that uh, if you have a moment, you can subscribe to the channel, like and share this video, and let others know that Jesus has an interest in saving them and uh, bringing true life into their hearts and minds. God bless, and we'll see you soon.